Hey, I'm Pat Porter, broker for Rec Land Realty. Now, I know most of you watch our videos for the land information that we provide, but those of you who've been following us a long time, you also know that we put out some videos of just about the outdoor lifestyle and mostly hunting because all of us here at Rec Land pretty much uh, hunt, whether it's deer hunt, duck hunt, turkey hunt, small game, or all of the above. We do that a good bit. And I'll tell you in advance, I didn't prepare or plan for this video. It's about a Missouri deer hunt I just made bo during bow season. And I, the video just kind of all came together because of what happened. And I want you to see it because of the reality of it, because it's not some slick, uh, polished deal you're gonna see on the Outdoor Channel about how everything all just works out rosy. I want you to see this because it's got some cool parts in it. One thing I want to tell you up front, because I don't have this on video, is how this buck came in. He came out about 125 yards away in the edge of a field, and I was sitting on the edge of the field hunting the woods, but I could see in the edge of the field. And I could see his antlers. I knew it was a decent buck. Um, and so, you know, he came out just grazing in the clover. And so I, I hit my grunt call two or three times just to get his attention. He looked up and got his attention and he took a step or two toward me, then he went back to feeding. So I hit the grunt call one more time and he looked up and then I got my can, my little Primo's deer bleat can and just hit it three or four times and here he came, just step, 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 not on a dead run, but just a steady walk toward me and I got, oh my goodness, he's gonna get, maybe close the gap. So. He got halfway, then got distracted again, as they do. So he put his head down, he's eating clover, so I hit that call, that can call, one more time, and he threw his head up and made a beeline right toward me, right toward my stand, and there's some trees there, so I'm having a tough time figuring out how I'm gonna get a shot through the edge of these trees into this field if he gets that close and gives me a shot. So with that said, here comes the video and I want you to see it. And I don't mean to be graphic in anything you're about to see, but it's just the reality of what happens when you're bow hunting in real life, out there by yourself, sometimes this stuff happens. Thanks for watching. I just shot a pretty good buck. Um, he's right out there. In the edge of the field, I hope he goes down. I'd like to see him go down right there. I'll show you a picture of him if, if I get him. I may have shot him just a little far back, but it, it seemed like an okay shot, but it may have been a little far back. I'm not spooking him. Well, I'm back at the camp. Um, yeah, I did hit that buck, and I did hit him a little far back. Um, now, I thought through the shot a hundred times, and I was so focused on shooting through that little window in between those limbs that I did not think about or adjust for the fact that the deer was quartering to me. And so when I hit him, you know, about where I normally would, back behind the shoulder, of course the angle takes the arrow into the guts um, as opposed to into the chest. And so, man, I, I've shot deer quartering to me a number of times. I just shoot in front of the shoulder, it goes right through the chest lights out but anyway so he's shot in the gut so i got down and just eased out of there i watched him 15 or 20 minutes there on the edge of that field he would just take a step stop step stop and it never would go down so uh, finally he just kind of stepped off in the woods and that's when i got out of the stand uh quietly made my way to the truck and left you know what four hours ago so i'm going back in the morning uh, about seven o'clock when the sun's good enough um, that'll be about 14 hours and just do my best to try to find him. So we'll see how it goes. I'll show you some video if we find him. We'll, we'll just see what it, see what the deal is. He's a decent buck too. I'm just sick over not thinking through that quarter and two shot and, and making a better shot. So anyway, that's, that's hunting. Well, it's 7.08 um, and I'm heading out to go try to find that deer. As you can see, uh, it's a little bit frosty. It's 20 degrees this morning, so it's a hard frost last night. Uh, it's about a five minute ride from here all the way to the edge of that uh, field that uh, I shot him at. I'll be able to drive right down to where I saw him kind of go in the woods. Man, I hope he bedded up right out there, and I hate that he suffered. I hate that I made such a stupid shot. Uh, just, anyway, you've heard what I said about the shot, but I'm gonna go give it my best to find him. Yeah, it is frosty this morning. Well, being as cold as it was last night, there's no issues with that deer. Uh, a, if I can find him, and B, if the coyotes didn't find him before I do. And a good morning to hunt, too. Oh, there goes another deer. Uh, 
I've seen um, several does and two bucks driving in. Uh, one of the bucks was a decent three-year-old eight-point. Oh, there goes a buck right there. See him running across. I saw that doe come out of the cover, and there's a buck chase right behind her. Yeah, it's been a good morning this morning. They're going right down there where my stand was. I'd see both of those deer from that, that stand if I'd have been on it this morning. All right, I'm standing here where my arrow was. Last night, I put just threw a cap on the ground right where I found my arrow. The stand, I don't know if you can make it out. It's right through those limbs right up in there. It's about, oh, heck, looking at it now, it's only maybe 23, 25 yards. Uh, the problem wasn't the distance. The problem, again, was that quarter and two shot into his midsection instead of into his chest. So anyway, I'm going to ease down here uh, where I saw him go in the woods and just start looking. Actually a good sign. I finally I picked up a bunch of blood there. Um, pretty red, rich looking blood. I may have gotten his liver too. And if I did, that's a, that's a good sign. Hey, can you see that right there? Right there, that brown spot right in the middle. That's a buck. But I cannot tell if he's dead. I mean, the way he's just laying, face looking right at me. Son of a gun. I've walked back and forth around here. Surely he's dead, but I, I hate to go up there and jump him. I'll never find him. Man, I'm going to have to take the chance. I've walked back and forth right here just a little bit. Has not moved. I mean, he hadn't flickered. And I'm 40 yards. I know he can see me and hear me. That's got, he's got to just be right there down. Just with his head laying there. Looks like he's still alive. Son of a gun. I'm going to ease up there and see. No, he hasn't moved. He's right there, has not moved. I gotta get across this creek anyway and go up there. Uh, I'm just gonna go back and get my four wheeler. There's a little trail that runs right there. And uh, go ahead and just pull a four wheeler up beside him and try to get him loaded up. Well, uh, that's him. That was just kind of spooky the way I find him because it looks like he was just bedded down, uh, just laying there staring at me because I've seen bucks do that before. They try to stay still until they think they've been spotted uh, anyway uh, it's only about 80 yards from where he went into the woods off the field looked like he crossed that creek and went up there and just bedded down and you know just died right there so let me get my four-wheeler and take it around there so much for the four-wheeler it's so cold this morning I guess it's draining on the battery. It's barely even turning over. So I can drive my truck uh, and get it a good bit closer. But I have got to drag that sucker across this creek. Uh, dang, it's not going to be any fun. Now, folks, tell me. That buck doesn't look like he's alive right there. Oh, he is. All right, brother, I'm leaving you alone. He is alive. <laughs> and I'm just backing on off. Son of a gun. Yeah, I don't want to cause any problems with you, man. Dang, that's the first. Let me get that close too, and he's, he still didn't bolt. He's still right there. I'm gonna get my bow and have to zap him. I do not want to take a chance grabbing him, cutting his throat. You know, I did that when I was a kid a lot. You know, deer still moving around a little bit. Just I just cut the throat real quick. That was before I had any sense and realized those things can hurt you. <laughs> so anyway, hope you'll stay right there long enough. Let me get close enough to get a shot. He'll bleed on out now. Come on, buddy. Just give it up. Give it up, bro. Just give it up. No, just give it up.
There you go. There you go. Well, it's one hour since I left the camp from right now. <laughs> that buck's on the ground right there behind uh, Anyway, now the hard work. So I'm gonna field dress him here, uh, drag him to the truck, get him in there somehow. <laughs> I'll figure it out. But he's a beautiful buck. Uh, he's not any of these, you know, 160, 70 inch bucks you boys are shooting in Kansas and uh, Iowa and Illinois and stuff. But he is a uh, seven point, a lot of mass. Seven point with a kick, a little sticker. So some folks would call him an eight. And uh, beautiful colored antlers. And, you know, just a great story the way he, uh, he's able to come in about 100, 125, 150 yards away to come in close enough to give me a shot. Uh, I, I made a bad shot. I didn't calculate the quarter in two, but he was down. Uh, then, he, you know, he, then he wasn't down, uh, but now he's down permanent. So uh, anyway, I'm grateful. It was a lot of fun. I've killed a decent buck on this Missouri property three years in a row. Uh, it's a cool place. So now let me do the work. Any of y'all want to come help me? Come on, I'm going to need it. There's that little sticker I was telling you about right there. So he's just a seven. Real, real gnarly. And that sticker. So pretty little buck. Man, I got him loaded up back there in the truck. Got it loaded up. Uh, just kind of cleaning up a little bit in this little creek right here. It's been a job doing this by yourself. I don't recommend it by yourself, but it's the way it goes. So anyway, that was not easy. Getting that bad boy loaded up by, by myself. So this is done. Let's call it a gear. Well, exactly two hours from the time I drove away from the camp, I've got him found, field dressed, loaded up, and on my way back to the camp to just kind of load up and Head to the processor, head home. That sucker right there, that's a pretty good buck. Decent little two-year-old buck right there. You can see. Look at it, he's 15 steps. Hey boy. Hey, you looking for a girlfriend? You're too ugly and stupid to have a girlfriend. Especially standing right there. Very stupid or very brave. There you go. He's gonna run out right in front of me again. <laughs> oh, that's a good buck chasing the dog right there. A few Missouri girls. I wonder if they're gonna bolt the fence in front of me. Yep. They sure are. There went one. Oh, the other two. They're panicking. Don't leave us. Mom and her two yearlings. Come on. Oh, there you go. There you go. Go find mama. Those little ones just can step right through that barbed wire fence. Little suckers. Tell you what, it would have been a good morning to be on the stand at our little farm here. Uh, of course, I was out finding that deer this morning, so I couldn't be on the stand, but I've seen two good eight points and um, another young eight point and another little smaller buck just while I was driving in and out to get my deer. So <laughs> they're moving around on their feet this morning and bucks are definitely cruising.